Hello everyone. In the previous videos, we have learned to import the libraries, importing the data set, handling missing data, encoding categorical data. I hope you all implemented the code. Now let's see how to split the data set into training and test set. So we'll start here by adding a text cell, splitting data set into training and test set. So we'll add a code cell here. You'll be creating one training set where you're gonna train your machine learning model on existing observations and one test set where you're going to evaluate the performance of your model on new observations. Well, we are gonna do it with a function, a function by scikit-learn the most popular and useful data science library. This library contains a module that is called model selection, which contains itself a function called train test split. And this function will exactly do what we want, which is to create four separate sets, not two, because we'll actually create a pair of matrix of features dependent variable for training set and another pair of matrix of features dependent variable for test set. So we are basically going to get four sets. X train, which is matrix of features of training set. X test, which is matrix of features of test set. Y train, which is dependent variable of training set. And Y test, which is dependent variable of test set. That's exactly what we want. And now, why do we want this? From the names itself, it is clear that these are used to train and test the model. It's actually the future machine learning model that expects this format as input. For training, it expects X train and Y train as input in a method actually called the fit method. And for predictions, also called inference, these models will predict X test. So that's the reason. It is simply the format expected by the future machine learning models. And now let's get these four sets. So we are going to get them from scikit-learn from which we are going to get access to model selection and then we are going to import that train test split function. So we'll start here from sklearn and to access the module, you add dot here, model, selection, import, train, test, split. From scalar dot model selection, import, train, test, split. So now that we have this function, we are going to use it. And since we already know what this function will return, as I have just explained, let's create these four variables returned by the train test split function. They are the first one, x train, then x test, y train, and y test. Extreme the matrix of features of training set, therefore containing all the countries one hot encoded, ages, and salaries of training set. So extreme. Then x test the matrix of features of test set. Then we have y train, which is dependent variable of training set, meaning all the purchase decisions of the customers in the training set. And then we have Y test, which is the same, contains all the purchase decisions of customers in the test set. So that's the four variables returned by this train test split function. And since it is the function that returns this variables, let's add here an equals and train test split. Train, test, split. 
and then we add some parentheses to give arguments and now what do you think we give inside this function as input can you make a guess this train test split is supposed to split something so one of the input will be that something which we are about to split and which is of course our data set however this function does not expect the data set as a whole it expects the combination of matrix of features x and dependent variable vector y and that's the first two inputs of this function so let's input them here x first the matrix of features and y the dependent variable vector so great we still have to input two more arguments which are going to be first the split size because we are not going to split this data set into a training set and test set of same size actually we need a lot of observations in training set and few in the test set we need a lot of them in the training set so as to give the future machine learning model more chances to understand and learn the correlations in the data set so most of the experts recommend to have 80% observations in the training set and 20% in the test set and therefore here we are going to input a parameter which is test size test size and we'll set this equals to 0.2 which means 20% observations will go into the test set and therefore here since we have 10 observations in the data set that means 8 observations will go into the training set meaning 8 customers will go into the training set and 2 will be in the test set and this is not necessarily the last 2 they will take randomly but 8 of them will go into the training set and 2 of them into the test set and now we'll add one final argument just for teaching purposes so that we can have the same results displayed in here because the observations will be randomly split into training set and test set to make sure we have the same random factors we'll just set here random state equals to 1 random state equals to 1 so now we'll get the same split and therefore the same training set and same test set this is the code to split the data set into training set and a test set this will return these four new sets composed of training set and which are x train y train and the test set that are x test and y test so we are going to add four new code cells here and we are going to print each of these created sets so first let's add a code cell here to print x train then we print x test then we add a code cell to print y train and then we print y test perfect so now let's execute everything Yes, perfect. It's all run successfully. In extreme, as you can see, we have 8 observations in training set 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight observations in the training set, which corresponds to eight customers, which corresponds to eight customers taken randomly from this data set, and we clearly recognize the features here with first the three columns being here, which are the one hot encoded variables that encode the country category we also call those as dummy variables then we clearly have here the age as our second feature and then the salary so we clearly have a great matrix of features for training set all right perfect now let's see x test we have two observations containing the same features here this is matrix of features still. So we have the dummy variables here in the first three columns, then the age, then the salary of our two customers taken randomly from the data set into the test set. Then we see Y train. So here we have eight purchase decisions with the zeros and ones here that we are encoded before with label encoder. And of course, these eight purchase decisions correspond to eight same customers of this matrix of features X train of training set. These features correspond to those purchase decisions. These are the same customers here. And finally, Y test, which will output two results, meaning two purchase decisions, right? Zero and one. Corresponding to, of course, the same customers as in matrix of features of test set. All right, so there you go. Congratulations. Now you know splitting the data set into training set and test set. In the next video, we'll discuss feature scaling. So before going to the next video, there is one question we'll be discussing here. Do we have to apply feature scaling before splitting the data set into training set and test set or after? Some people will say that we have to apply feature scaling before the split. Some people will say after the split. So the answer is we have to apply feature scaling after the splitting the data set into training set and test set. Similar to that what we have done here. And now let me explain why. So of course splitting the data set into training set and test set consists of making two separate sets. One training set where you are going to train your machine learning model on existing observations and one test set where you are going to evaluate the performance of your model on new observations. And it's important to understand that these new observations are exactly like some future data that you are going to get and on which you are going to deploy your machine learning model. And now feature scaling simply consists of scaling all your variables, all your features actually to make sure they all take values in the same scale. And we do this so as to prevent one feature to dominate the other, which therefore would neglect, would be neglected by the machine learning model. We have to apply feature scaling after splitting the data set into training and test set. It's really obvious. It is for the simple reason that the test set is supposed to be a brand new set on which you are going to evaluate your machine learning model. So it's exactly like you're training your machine learning model on your training set and then later on after it is trained, you're going to deploy it on new observations. So what this means is that test set is something you're not supposed to work with for training. And feature scaling is, as you will see, is a technique that will get the mean and standard deviation of your feature in order to perform the scaling. So if we apply feature scaling before the split, then it will actually get the mean and standard deviation of all the values, including the ones in the test set. And since the test set is something you're not supposed to have, like some future data in production, applying feature scaling on the original data set before the split would cause somewhat we call information leakage on the test set. We would grab some information from the test set which we are not supposed to get. 
because it is supposed to be new data with new observations so remember this the essential reason why we should not apply feature scaling before the split is to prevent information leakage on test set which you are not supposed to have until the training is done so before going to the next video make sure you implement the code discussed so far and experiment different things by changing train set test set size and observe bye